Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the theme adjuster, mixer control panel in Reaper. So in order to use the Reaper 6 theme adjuster, we need to be using the Reaper 6 default theme. So we'll go up here to the options menu under themes and make sure we choose default which is the default six theme. Then we can choose the theme adjuster. And it opens up and looks like this. Now the track control panel decides what we see over here in the track control panel. We could also tab over to the mixer control panel, custom colors, or the envelopes. But in a previous video, we went over the track control panel. So in this video, I wanna focus on the mixer control panel, which decides what our mixer looks like. So let's open up the mixer, which looks like this. And everything in this window over here will control what we see over here. And as we can see, there's three separate layouts to choose from, A, B, and C. But that's not to be confused with the track control panel layouts. Those also have three to choose from, but they're completely separate. So layout A is the default for new projects. And we could see that if we go to the options menu and go down here to layouts and choose mix a panel. And right over here, we could see our default. I have mine set to 150% A. We could change it to B or C or use the other sizes. Now we're only gonna get three sizes. If you're using a high definition monitor, you're gonna get 100%, 75%, or 50%. But I'm using a regular monitor, so I'm gonna get 100%, 150%, and 200%. And if we choose 200%, all the controls look a lot bigger. Or if we choose 100%, they look a lot smaller. But I'm gonna use 150% A. So our controls will be this size, somewhere in between. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is the folder indent. The drum track and the instrument track are both folders with these tracks being the child tracks within them. So as you can tell, these tracks are a bit higher compared to the folders. And that's controlled by the folder indent right here. It defaults to a half, but we can make it bigger and the indent more or smaller. And the indent a bit less. In fact, we can bring it all the way down to none. And these tracks are still in their folders, but they're no longer indented. But let's put it back to half, which is the default. Then over here, we could decide if the controls on the track are still aligned. By default, they are. So our fader at full volume is the same height as this one, and the same with the envelopes button. But if we switch it to folder indent, it indents those controls as well. So this fader, even though it's at zero, doesn't align with this one. And the same with the buttons. They indent as well. But by default, they're gonna be aligned. Next, we'll check out the borders. By default, there's no borders added to the mixing tracks. So over here, there's no extra color or extended section for each track but we could add that right over here to the left edge and the left side has an extra piece with the track color, or we could do it on the right edge and the right side has an extended piece with the color. Or we could do it around folders, which is really helpful to quickly see what tracks are in folders. So the left side of our folder has a left edge, and the last track in that folder has a right edge. 
but nothing in the middle. So it makes it a lot easier to see what tracks are in our folder, especially if you don't indent. So if we change the folder indent to be none, we can still quickly see what tracks are in folders because the color kind of surrounds the entire folder. And if it gets too messy with many sublevels of folders, we can just choose root folders. And then just the first layer of folders will have edges around them. But by default, there's no borders on our tracks. So they look like this. Next, we'll deal with this section over here. This first row decides if we extend our tracks with a sidebar. So if we choose this option here and we select one of our tracks, that track has a sidebar over here, giving us a bigger fader throw over here. And we can see our effects and our sends a lot bigger. And if our track is not selected, we don't get a sidebar, unless we choose this option as well. Now all the tracks have a sidebar, whether they're selected or not. But these options are off by default, but we can turn them on. We can do the same thing if our tracks are armed or not. So if we choose this and we arm our tracks, those tracks get a sidebar. If they're not armed, they don't. Or we could choose this one in addition, and they all get a sidebar, if they're armed or not. And again, these two options are off by default, but we could turn them on. Then the next row will narrow our mixer channels. If we choose the first option, it's going to narrow our tracks if they're selected. Or we could choose both, and they're going to be narrow whether they're selected or not. And the same thing if the tracks are armed. Arm this track, and it's narrow. Unarm it, and it's not. Or we could have it narrow no matter what. Or we could choose these two options at the same time. So if we arm our track, we get a sidebar. Otherwise, they're narrow. Or do a similar thing with selections. Select these two. And if we select our track, we get a sidebar. Otherwise, they're all narrow. But this is all off by default. Then down over here, we have the meter expansion. This is only going to matter if our tracks have more than two channels. So let's go to this first track under routing. And let's make it six channels. Now this track gets wider to make room for the meter, as we can see right here. If we turn these options off, the track width stays the same. And how wide it gets is based on this section right here. It's plus four. We can make it plus two or none or as high as eight. And these are on by default. But we could turn it off right here. So it'll only get wider if we select this track. We'll put it into record. But these two options are on by default. But it's only going to matter if your tracks have more than two channels. Then this row over here decides if we see the element labels on our tracks. The little numbers over here and the labels over here. They're on by default, but we could turn them off, which keeps it a bit cleaner. And we could also only have them on if we select our tracks. And then we see those element labels. And we can do the same thing if the tracks are armed. Arm the track, then we see all the element labels on that track. Take it out of record, and we don't. Once we choose this option as well, if track is not armed. But these are off by default, and these two are on. So always going to see the element labels if the track is selected or not. So that's this section. So let's assign our tracks to layouts. 
we'll keep the first three on layout A, and we'll select the next three, choose layout B, and the percentage we want to use. I'll choose 150%, which switches these three tracks to layout B. And as you can see, they're a bit narrower than these, because in layout B, we're using narrow form. Of course, you can change it right here if you want. And then for the last track, the vocal, let's assign that to layout C, which is already set up with an extended sidebar, which of course we could change. We'll choose 150% again. And now that track is assigned to layout C. So you can see it has a sidebar over here. So you have three different layouts within our mixer, which can all look and behave completely differently. Now, besides the layouts in this window, we could also choose some preferences or options. Like right over here, we could show the effects or inserts, which we're seeing right now, or hide them by clicking this. We no longer see the effects inserts in the mixer. Show it again. Then over here, we could show the effects parameters in the mixer as well. By default, they're hidden, but we could choose it, and we could see all the effects parameters in our mixer. But again, they're off by default. And we could also show or hide our sends right here. Hide them or show them in our mixer. And we could also show multiple row mixers when size permits or scroll to select the tracks. And then finally, if we had track icons selected, we could see them in the mixer as well. But there's one more thing I wanna show you. If we use the mixer control panel a lot, you might wanna dock it. So we can hit this button right here, and that docks the theme adjuster up here. We could do all the same things from here. Hide the effects, the effects parameters, the sends, adjust the borders for each layout, or the sizes, or anything else we did in that window. So that's pretty much it. That's the theme adjuster, mix a control panel in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!